Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about COVID-19 and what should we know so far. So essentially, this is just a general guideline. If you need further medical advice, please contact your registered healthcare professional. There's three objectives that we're going to go through today. One is to bring awareness and educate our potential and current clients and employees about COVID-19. To know the difference in testing for SARS-CoV-2, and finally, to find the right sources of information. Coronavirus is basically a large family of viruses that causes illness such as common cold to more severe diseases such as MERS and SARS. SARS-CoV-2, which is another name for COVID-19, essentially is a new strain of coronavirus that's being identified and as much as all this coronavirus, they come from a source and usually, usually are animals. SARS comes from Chevet cats and rares from camels. As for COVID-19, we are yet to determine which animal is from. Some of the best practices that you can do now during this time and after MCO is regularly wash your hands. Cough and sneeze into your van of your elbow or tissue. Discard the tissue immediately and wash your hands. Truly cook your meat and eggs. And finally, avoid any close contact with anyone that shows respiratory illness. So a lot of times in the news, we hear the word flattening the curve. This is an example of her world data by John Hopkins University. Then Korea had an outbreak um, in, in early March, uh, early fe uh, February to March. You can see that now Korea is having a flattening of the curve because of uh, testing, tracking, and also treating the patient. Whereas for most European countries, as you can tell here, or um, the United States, which the number now has been the highest, um, you can see their trajectory is always an upward trend and it doesn't look like flattening anytime soon. There are a few countries that managed to actually flatten the curve. Um, but before we go into that, I'm just going to explain what flattening the curve means. So currently in this MCO period, it's basically what we're trying to achieve is uh, distribution of uh, the cases over time. If there isn't an MCO being implemented and people are still going about um, to their daily activities, then we have a lot of cases, a spike of cases, just like what happens in Spain and Italy. So this is currently our healthcare system, which is a dotted line, which is the number of hospital beds we have, ventilators we have, and a number of ratio of doctors, nurses to patients. So what happens in Spain and Italy is that they didn't have any measures of tracking, uh, locking down, or treating patients at the early stage. So then they had a huge spike of patients, the doctors cannot cope, the doctors are infected, and people are dying at a faster rate. What the MCO is trying to do is to slow down the spread with controls. So the controls are like hand washing, social distancing, no, no large gathering, uh, minimizing travels. So what is, so before we go into what social distancing is, these are the countries that managed to flatten the curve, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. They managed to track the close contact earlier on, um, they did social distancing and they did tracing um, of all these uh, clusters and also uh, containment so they make sure they treat the patient early as well. And these are the rest of the countries in the world that uh, they are showing an upward trend. So Malaysia, we are, we are going in an upward trend, but what the MCO is trying to do is to bring it down to a flattening of the curve. Not only do you do this, it's really staying at home and practice social distancing. So some of the things you can do um, in social distancing is there are no more handshakes and hugs during up. Uh, if you need to work or, or have any meetings, and just placing your palm of your head on your chest as a greeting, keeping a distance of six feet. Six feet is about two meters. And working remotely if your work allow. Uh, avoid crowds. Um, stay at home and really washing your hands. So by limiting human contact, we can reduce the transmission rate significantly. In return, increases the time it takes 
for cases to double. Thanks to the nature of the exponential function, such measures can have a huge impact on the total number of cases after given it time. So MCU is extended. What shall we do? Social distancing does not really mean disconnecting socially. You can Zoom call or FaceTime call your family and friends, online games with your family and friends, virtual karaoke, gardening, home workout. These are some of the examples that you can do up. MCU is being extended. So when do you seek medical advice? Some of the common symptoms are fever, tightness, and dry cough, and shortness of breath. Please, please call your doctor and seek medical attention if you have fever, cough, or difficulty in breathing. This is the differentiation between flu allergies and COVID-19 on the right. If you have fever, then you have to ask yourself, are you having shortness of breath? If you are, you might have COVID-19. If you're not, maybe chances are you have flu. If you have flu fever, do you have itchy eyes? If you do, it might be an allergy. But if you don't, it might be a common cold. And I hope this will be easily um, for you to differentiate the between, between flu, allergies, cold, and COVID-19. So in the market, we have a lot of tests right now for COVID-19. Today, we're going to discuss on the two types of tests, which is the antibody test, which is IgG, IgM detection kit, and the gold standard, um, reverse real-time reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction test, which is the RT-PCR test. So the antibody test actually looking for evidence that the body has exposed and reacted to the virus. Whereas for the PCR test, we're looking for the, at the directly at the virus. The antibody test, it takes about 30 minutes to produce the results, whereas the PCR test takes about 24 to 48 hours. The antibody test is a self-service, Whereas um, the PCR test, you need to send it to the lab, which is a labor intensive. Um, the reliability of the antibody test is it gives you a false negative. If you you are a bit infected, but it takes the body it takes the body time to produce antibody. So when you do it, when you do the test, when you don't have the antibody, you'll produce a false negative. Whereas the PCR, which detects the virus, is a gold standard for me to measure whether you have coronavirus or not. This is an illustration how it looks like. In the coronavirus, you will have to do a nasal or throat swab. And then we have the centrifuge in the lab to get the RNA. And then we have the enzyme called reverse transcriptase to duplicate the RNA into the DNA. And then they will, they will duplicate multiple times and put it in, in the fluorescent dye. And if let's say the coronavirus, then it will light it up. Whereas in the antibody test, you have to take a blood sample and you and then you the antibody IgG and IgM, then they will detect um, whether you produce the virus and bind to the virus. The positive, a positive test will indicate that you have immune system to respond to past infection. So therefore, PCR is really a gold standard to detect the virus because you can have the virus and not have the antibody yet. If you like to find out more. You're going to help with just COVID dot um, If you, um, there will be more information about COVID nineteen. If you like to help, uh, if you like the COVID nineteen test kit, please contact your HR and your average brother with us. As for information, with so many news from auntie, uncles, grand uncle, and all that, these are the reputable news you can go into to get updates about Malaysia uh, situation in COVID nineteen. You can scan the QR code. This is a telegram uh, from the Homeland Security that will update information around 5 p.m. every day. Thank you. If you like more information, please feel free to visit our website. And have a good day.